Okay. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Steve Hunger. I am the manager for uh, customer experience here at Kim Group. And welcome to uh, this month's Lunch and Learn entitled Regular Expression Basics in Splunk. We appreciate your time today and believe that you'll come away with, an addi with additional tools that will assess you, assist you in your day-to-day -day work with Splunk. Today's session will be delivered to you by Eric Holsinger, who is a member of our customer experience team and delivers ex Splunk expertise to our customers and supports our Atlas product. With that, I'll hand it over to Eric. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, like Steve mentioned, today we are gonna be covering Regex basics in Splunk. Um, and we can go ahead and show that on today's agenda, uh, we're going to start with a front-loaded intro to regex, um, just a uh, broad overview of regex, how to use it, how to read it um, on the basics level. Uh, then we'll move on to Splunk and regex, a couple of different ways that you can use regex within Splunk. Um, and then our live demo portion today will cover the regex, rex, and erex commands within Splunk itself. Um, these are run within the search bar within Splunk, uh, SPL, Splunk Processing Language. Um, so those are going to be our main focus today for our live demo. So we can go ahead and jump right into a practical breakdown of the intro to regex. So what is regex, uh, otherwise known as regular expression? Uh, we just shorten it to regex uh, for shortening purposes a sequence of characters that can pattern match in text. Uh, this allows for advanced pattern matching on your data, and it can be used to manipulate text and data, uh, especially in Splunk, um, such as creating new fields, replacing pieces of data, and more. And so these are some of the uh, basic characters that you will use whenever you're uh, working with regex. Um, so you have your control characters. Uh, so you have your caret, which can mark the start of a string. Uh, and you have your dollar sign that can mark the end of a string. Um, and all of these we will see working together uh, later on here. Uh, the most basic character types, we have a slash S means a white space. Um, so any kind of white space, it can be in a number of different things, um, just a non-digit, non-character space, essentially. Uh, capital S is a non-white space. Uh, lowercase d with a slash is a digit. Uh, similarly, upper, lower, or rather, uppercase D with a slash is not a digit. Slash lowercase w is a word character, whether that's a letter, um, a symbol, or such as uh, the pound sign or the underscore. Uh, slash capital W is not a word character. And slash lowercase n is a new line. That's how you specify a new line. Um, and then we have operators that we can combine with the character types. So we have a star, which means zero or more, plus, which means one or more, or a question mark, which means either zero or one. So for example, and we'll see it in a slide or two, if we had a slash D, lowercase d, to mean digit, and we had a plus on the end of that, that means we are looking for one or more digits. Um, and with regex, you usually tell it whenever to look for a different character. Um, so essentially, if you had a slash lowercase d plus, it would look for as many digits as it could find until it hit one that was not a digit. Um, and this is not a comprehensive overview of all the control characters, character types, and operators. Uh, we're just keeping it up on a basics level today. Um, but all of these elements work together to specify a pattern. And so this is an example. And it's uh, kind of a messed up the formatting there for me, unfortunately. I apologize about that. But I can go ahead and explain this. So we uh, have a red caret and a red dollar sign that is marking the beginning and end of the string. As you can see, uh, before the 0, 07, I can actually turn on drawing. That might be a little bit helpful. Right here and right here is what we are considering the caret and the dollar sign. So that is the beginning of the string and the end of the string. We have our D plus in green. So this is looking for one or more digits. And so we are looking at one or more digits. We have two right here with the 07. And we're telling it to look for a white space afterwards. And that tells us whenever we're done looking for digits. 
So we have our white space here, which in this case is a literal space. Then we are looking for one or more word characters. So here we're looking for word characters, and that can be uppercase or lowercase in this uh, example. So we have captured the FEB here. And again, ends with a uh, slash S to look for a white space, which we have here. And then we are looking for a, uh, and this should all be one line. So we're looking for a slash D plus once again. And again, we have four digits here. So we capture all of those until we hit a white space, which is this space right here. And then finally, we have a slash D plus, and then we have a colon. And so if there is no slash around it um, in a couple of different situations that I'll talk about, most times, if you see just a symbol or a letter by itself, it means literally that character. So in this case, we're looking for one or more digits, which we have 18 here. And then we're looking literally for this colon. And so we find it here. We match on that. And again, we look for one or more digits. We have four or five here. We match on the literal character of the colon here. And then we have our uh, final one or more digits, which we match on right here. And so that is kind of how this basic regex string happens and what it matches to. And that is using the uh, these two control characters, uh, s or slash s for white space, slash d for digit, slash w for word character. And it is using the plus for one or more of our operators. Let me get the drawing out of here. And so if we move on, and unfortunately, saving this to, maybe if I do full screen, nope. unfortunately, saving this has caused some uh, formatting issues, but I'll describe it the best I can here. So we're going to move on to our special operators. And these are different types of operators we can use within the regex to mean different things. Um, so we have first our pipe here. And as you can see, that's just the straight line. And so this gives you multiple options. You can think of it as or. So we here we have a regex, and we have the literal word chocolate. We have a pipe, which means or, and then the literal word vanilla. So below, if you can't read it here, we have two word or two sentences. One says chocolate ice cream is the best. One says vanilla ice cream is the best. With this regex, we would match on both chocolate and vanilla, because we have that or. So that is the uh, pipe operator there. We have inclusion brackets, which if you have uh, whatever you have inside of a bracket, you include. So you match on what's inside of the brackets. So here we have a regex matching literally on the word host name and the literal colon. And then within the brackets, we have a couple ranges. So here we can see we have A to Z in lowercase. That means we're looking for any character that is A to Z lowercase. We also have A to Z uppercase because in inclusion brackets, the uh, case does matter. So we're looking for all uh, letters of the alphabet essentially in both upper and lowercase, as well as all digits zero through nine in any combination of those. And after that, we have a plus on the outside of the inclusion bracket. So we're looking for one or more characters that match this. And so here, uh, this says host name, so we matched on host name here. We have our colon, we have our colon, and then we match on the entire word win event host 92, because as you can see, it has both upper and lowercase a to z, which we match on, and then it has numbers, which we also match on, and we put the plus, so it's looking for one or more. And so it goes until it hits something that is not included in the inclusion brackets. In this case, it is a comma. Uh, so if there was no comma here, we would match on uh, everything up into the equal sign. So that is the inclusion brackets there. Remove some of my drawing here. The exclusion, similar, we use the same brackets as inclusion. But if you see brackets that start with a caret, know that that means you're excluding what's inside the bracket or stopping at what's in the bracket. So here... Again, we're matching on the literal name, host name, the literal character, colon. So we have host name, colon. 
And then we are, see we have an exclusion bracket. So we know that we are matching on everything until we hit a uh, comma. So here, after we match that, we say, oh, we're going to catch all of this. We hit the comma and we stop. So essentially, these two are doing the same thing in different ways. And that is something that we will cover a couple of times throughout the presentation today, is that there are a vast number of ways you can do similar or same things with regex. Um, and there's no one correct way more than the other. There are ways that are more performant than others, um, but there are a lot of times multiple ways you can get regex uh, created for the same purpose. And so we'll move on to a couple more special operators here. So here we're going to do repetition. Oops, I stopped drawing on. Uh, so here we're going to put our number in curly braces. Um, so you can see we can put one curly brace number or we can put a range. So it matches on repetitions, either the specific number or a range of numbers. So here we have a regex, as you can see. We're looking for a digit, and then we have our curly braces with a one comma three. And what this means is we're looking for a digit, and we're looking for one, two, or three digits. So if there's one, two, or three digits, we will match on that until we hit a period. Because we have a slash here and a period, that means we're looking for that literal character period. And we're matching on that and stopping this first match here once we hit that period. And again, we're going to do that again, match on the period, do that one more time, match on the period, do that one more time. And so as you can see, this is a way that you can use regex to match on IP addresses. Because IP addresses, as we know, can have between one and three characters in each octet. And so this is a way to capture uh, a whole range of, or any kind of range of IP addresses because you're accounting for the fact that it may be one number, it may be two numbers, or it may be three numbers in that octet. So that is repetition. And then we have local or logical groupings, and those are inside parentheses. And that's how we can group together a set of regex, and it will remember the, that match, and it can form patterns. So this is obviously very jumbled because of the uh, issues that I've had here. But essentially, we're looking for a regex matching on the literal word host name, and again, the literal colon. And then we are matching on a logical grouping. We're creating logical grouping here with A to Z. So we're matching on anything that starts with a capital letter from A to Z. After that, we're matching on one or more word characters. And so uh, this would actually match on when event server here, and you can't see this, but this says Linux machine here with a capital L, it would not match on Linux web server because this starts with a lowercase l. And I can go ahead and move on because logical grouping is also how we can extract fields. Specifically in Splunk, this is how we extract fields. Um, and again, this is unfortunately messed up. But you can see a name captured group is also in those parentheses. But it starts with a question mark. And then we put the group name that we are creating in uh, less than and greater than symbols. So as you can see, this regex, and we're actually going to use this regex in Splunk later on in just a moment. Uh, you can see we are marking the beginning and end of a string. And then you can see we have our parentheses, and we start with that question mark. So we know this is going to be a named capture group. We're naming the first field 1. And in this case, we are matching on the literal capital H. Here we have a dot, which we do not have a slash in front of. So this dot literally means any character. Um, so that would match up with the E here. We're looking for the character L repeated twice. So we have our double Ls here. And then the literal character O. So that matches on hello. And then we have a space here. And then we have another named capture group that is going to be named 2 where we are matching on either a capital or lowercase w character, followed by one or more word characters, followed by the literal character D. 
So that would match on world, both uppercase and lowercase. Um, and I will show in just a moment a little bit uh, more logical grouping, but essentially we have group one and group two. Um, and so group one, we would have hello and hello because we matched on that. Group two, we would have world and world, one with a capital and one with a lowercase. So that are some ba that's some basics of regex. And like I said, once we get to our live demo, I will show you in more detail how those actually work within Splunk itself. But we can go ahead and move on to uh, Splunk and regex, some ways to use regex within Splunk. So the first way we can use it is for field extractions. Um, so I'm going to show you with the rex command how we can extract fields at search time, but we can also extract fields uh, and that would be for that specific search that we're running. We can also extract fields for all searches. Uh, so there's a couple different ways. So as you can see, if you're uh, familiar with Splunk, whenever you run a search, you're gonna have this interesting fields bar. At the bottom, we have an extract new fields button. Also in Splunk, if you click on a individual event and click event actions, there's an extract fields button there. Both of these will take you to the same page uh, and I know it's a little hard to see, but um, essentially you're able to choose if you want to extract fields through regex or if you want to extract through a delimiter. So if your data is comma, comma delimited, you can extract fields based off of that, or you can extract fields off regex. And how it works is that you highlight a value that you want to extract, and Splunk will try to create a regex automatically to extract that. So as you can see, this is looking to try to extract a IP address. Um, but as you can also see, the regex that Splunk creates is very long, very complicated. Oftentimes, it does a great job of trying to get it the best it can, but it's not going to be very performant. And oftentimes, it won't actually capture everything you need. I know it's hard to see, but down here, it's capturing these two. But there are other IP addresses that it's not capturing. So this is a great way to get your uh, field extraction started with regex, but we definitely recommend uh, clicking the edit regex button and creating regex of your own that will actually capture everything you need and capture um, and be a little more performant the way that you write it. And we also can use regex for data ingest. So uh, props and transforms, those are two com configuration files within Splunk. Uh, Props.conf essentially says what rules are applied to certain events. And transforms.conf uh, defines those rules with regex. So this right here is props, and this is transforms. That's a T. And so this is saying, uh, this is kind of showing the rules that are going to be applied to certain events, to DHCPD events. You can see this is one of the rules here, the DHCP offer extract. That rule and what it does is defined in transforms. So essentially props is telling you what you're going to do and defining the rule and then telling you to go to tra uh, transforms and see what that rule is actually performing regex wise. So you can see here in transforms, and this is actually pulled from uh, the Splunk offered Linux uh, Unix TA. Uh, if you want to check it out yourself, it's a great place to start. Uh, so this is, as you can see, we have our DHCP offer extract, which we are uh, defined here. And then we have our regex of what it's actually doing below. So this is pulled out, uh, sent out to your indexers. Whenever it's collecting that data, it says, OK, we have this type of data. We know what to do with it. We're going to apply this regex, and it's going to do a specific uh, task to that data, whether it's um, filtering, whether it's collecting specific events, uh, you can do a number of different things with regex there. The transforms.conf can also be used to mask sensitive data as it comes into Splunk. I'm going to show you later in the live demo how we can mask data at search time. But if you wanted to mask data before it even gets to your search head, you can do that through transforms.conf. If you have things like credit card information, anything like that, that you don't want that raw data coming into Splunk, uh, unfiltered or unmasked, uh, you would trans use transforms.com to mask that data. 
And there's an example there. And so we also have the ability to uh, perform ingest actions starting with Splunk 9.0. And from here, you can do a lot of similar things that you can do with props and transforms in the UI. Um, so you can set ingest actions that can mask data, or it can filter data coming into Splunk to reduce ingest. So here we have an example where um, we're looking for a specific event with our regex, and we're replacing it with redacted. So we're looking for J session ID. Or we're looking for one or more word characters. Whenever it finds those, uh, it's going to replace those word characters with the word redacted. In here, we are using filter with regex. So we're matching on raw data. If it matches this regular expression here, we want it to drop that data. You're also able to send it to a separate uh, S3 bucket, something like that, if you need to. In this case, in this example, we're sending it, uh, we're dropping those events. We don't need those. And as you can see, in this particular example, that actually caused a 87% drop in uh, ingest, saved on license usage that we uh, didn't necessarily need uh, that event for. So pretty powerful tool. Um, and a couple months ago, our own Brett Woodruff actually gave a lunch and learn on ingest actions. Um, so definitely check that out if you want to know more information. Like I mentioned, it's pretty new, starting with Splunk 9.0 and a pretty powerful tool. And finally, we can use regex commands. Uh, like I mentioned, these are performed in the Splunk search bar. Uh, we have the rex command, which we use to extract fields or substitute characters in a field. The regex command, which filters results based on a regex string. And then we have erex, which is automatic regex extraction based on patterns. So if we want to dive in a little bit deeper as I get a drink here. The erex command is used to extract fields from data when you don't know the regular expression to use. And so you have to provide examples of what you're looking to extract and the command automatically extracts similar field values. It requires you to use a field and example argument. So here in this example command, we are piping to our erex command. We are piping to a field that we want to extract. So we want to extract uh, data and we want to put it into a new field called status. And then we give examples. So we're looking uh, for events similar to status equals 200, status equals 400. Splunk will look through our data, try to find similar events, and pull those out into the status field. And I'll show that soon in our live demo. But again, like the uh, other field extractions that I was talking about, automatic regex by Splunk is sometimes not the most performant. And it actually does recommend you use Rex once it gives you the regex that they think you need. Um, but it is good in a pinch if you are unsure of the regex. Uh, so we will go over the erex command soon. The rex command is used to extract fields based off a named capture group. So as we mentioned, that is our parentheses with a question mark at the beginning and then a field name in between the greater than and less than signs. Uh, it also allows for substitution of characters with the said mode. You do need to put mode equals said in your command if you want to use the substitution features. So an example of the rex command here, we have our rex. We tell it what field we're looking for. In this case, we're looking at the raw data. And then we're matching on the literal word user. We're creating a new field called user, looking for one or more word characters until we hit a white space. And that will pull out those values and put them into a new field called user. And we have our regex command. And you can use this to remove results that either do or do not match on a regex expression. So you can use um, to remove or add or keep events, I should say, that match or do not match on it. So you can use the regex command in combination with does not equal, aka the exclamation point equal sign, um, does not equal, to filter out results that match on the regex. You're not able to use uh, the not uh, modifier. You have to use the does not equal command or modifier here. So we have a very, very simple regex here. We're looking for location does not equal USA. And then we have another command here. We're looking for regex. Uh, where the IP address matches this regex expression. So if it starts with 192, 
and then essentially follows this pattern, uh, we want to uh, return events that match for this. And again, I will show some examples within Splunk Live here in a moment. And speaking of, let's go ahead and jump over to my screen here. I will zoom in a bit, make everything a little more visible. So here I have some uh, dummy data that I've created, and I'll work with a little bit more realistic data here in a moment. But to start out with, I've used the make results command, the eval command to make a field we called message, and then give it different uh, values here, and then append those to create uh, this table essentially. So we have one field with message, and then we have these seven results underneath that. So with this, we can actually see the regex command in action. So I will go ahead and pipe in a regex command. So this is a pretty similar uh, regex string that we've matched earlier. And as you may remember, the regex command itself is filtering on data. So we're looking at the message field and we want to match on uh, data that matches this regex command. So we have our starting, let me zoom in one more time actually. So we have our starting and our ending operators there with the caret and the dollar sign. We're matching on the literal character H. We're matching on any character, which is what this dot without a slash means. We're matching on the L twice because we have our repetition there. So literal character, as long as it's there twice in a row. And then we're matching on the literal character O we want a blank space there or a white space. And then we have a uh, grouping here where we can say if it starts with a lowercase w, if it starts with an uppercase w, or if it starts with a new line, the slash n, match on that. And then match on one or more word characters followed by the literal character d. And we do not want to match on the character of period. So this is uh, any character except for period, we do not want to match, or we want to match on. If it ends in a period, we do not want to match on it. So as you can see, we have seven results right now. If we go ahead and run this command, we can see it's now down to four. So it matches on hello world with an exclamation, hello world, with many O's, but ends in a dash. If it matches, it matches on hello world with a new space ending in plus. And then hello world, because technically we are matching on this. We have the H, literally any character, two L's, an O, a capital W, one or more word characters, and then a capital, or then a lowercase d, followed by a character that is not a period. So we do match on that. If we were to give this a does not equal, put the exclamation point in front of there, we are now going to match on the three that were not included in the first one. So hello world with no character at the end, hello goodbye, and double doubled. So obviously these do not match on it. So whenever we put does not equal in our regex command, we get those uh, that do not match. And then again here, we have those that do match. So for example, if we took away the question mark on hello world and then we ran this command again, it would no longer be included because again, we are looking for a character as long as it's not the period. So we can go ahead and put that back in here. And next, we are going to use the rex command to actually create two new fields based off of this data. And so as you can see, we pipe to our rex command we tell which field we want to use. In this case, we want to use message. In here, we have our uh, quotation marks to let us know it's our regex string. We start out telling that this is the start of the string, the end of the string. And again, we have our parentheses that have the question mark and then the later, later, less than and greater than symbol, letting us know that this is a named capture group. Within the uh, less than and greater than, we have our new um, field title. So it's going to be called first word. And again, we're matching on the same uh, or similar regex that we were last time. 
So we have the H, any character, two L's and an O, followed by a, a white space. And in this case, since they are right after each other, we can actually create two fields within one regex command. So we're creating a second field called second word. We're matching on lowercase w or uppercase w. We're matching on one or more word characters followed by a literal d. And then any uh, character that is not a uh, dot again, a period. So I can go ahead and comment this out for one second. Give us our original results here. And then if I uncomment out this command, we can see when I run it, uh, events that match this regex. Now I have removed these or I've created two new fields and pulled out the appropriate uh, value that matches our regex string. So you can see here, we match on all of the regex. So we pull out the first word, hello, second word, world with exclamation point. And again, here, here, and here. And so that is um, how you can use the rex command. And I will show you with a, a little bit more live data in a second as well. But one thing that I want to briefly touch on, it is a little bit beyond the scope of uh, intro to regex within Splunk, but I did want to touch on it very briefly, is that we can actually use regex without one of these regex commands. We can use it with the eval command. Um, so in this case, we are piping an eval command to create a new field called match. Then we're using the case command and matching that if our message, so we're uh, essentially, we can look at this part first. So if we match this, uh, so if our message field matches this uh, regex uh, expression here, so again, that is our H, two L's, O, uh, W, uh, letters D and not a period. So we were going to look for that. So that's what this is looking for. And then the case command says, if it does match this, then we're going to return a value of yes. So if we run that, you can see now the fields that uh, match our regex string here within the message field, we return yes. So like I mentioned, a little beyond the intro level and not related to the rex, regex, and erex command, uh, but I did want to show you that uh, there is even more beyond the intro uh, of how to use regex within Splunk SPL, uh, especially with eval commands and combination with that. So I can go ahead and move on to a little bit more realistic looking data. Uh, and we're going to be using Splunk demo data that anyone can download offline online. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can get the whole event there. So as you can see, this is some web data, uh, pretty well structured, uh, but we do not have many fields extracted here. Basically just date, index, line count, punctuation, etc. But as you can see, we have some data that we might want to pull out of here for our searches. Uh, failed password for invalid user app server from this IP address on port 3351. So in this case, I'm going to start out showing the erex command, uh, the benefits and drawbacks of it. So if we go ahead and zoom in one here, I'm going to go ahead and pipe to an erex command, and we're going to try to pull out the port uh, numbers. So we're going to put erex command. We're going to get a new field called port. Uh, and we're, to give it examples, we're going to say look for something that's similar to port 3351, port 3768. We can even put a new one in here, port uh, 3626. And so it's going to take a second to run here. So looking through all those events, pulling out that data with the regex that it is automatically creating. If we go down here in our interesting fields, we can now see we have a new field called port. If we click on that, we now see that we do have port 244, et cetera, pulled out. Unfortunately, it does have port in front of it. Not always the best in terms of using uh, usable data for Splunk. Preferably, we would just want the port number. Uh, one of the drawbacks of erex is that uh, any examples that you use, it's going to take very literally. 
uh, and may pull out things that you're not necessarily wanting. But one thing to point out is whenever we run the erex command, if we click on this job drop down here, you can say, see, see, it says successfully learned regex. Consider using the command rex, and then it gives you the regex that it brought out. Uh, because if you use erex and you find regex that you do like, it still recommends that you instead use the rex command. It is less uh, resource intensive than the erex command. Uh, so if you already know the regex, go ahead and use that rex command to pull out uh, fields, even if you got that regex from an erex command, just for uh, search performance. But again, this regex is pretty complex for what we're actually looking for and doesn't necessarily capture everything that we want because we can actually use um, the rex command to pull it out easier. I'm going to show this example using the IP address. So if we wanted to pull out the IP addresses from these uh, events here, I'm going to go ahead and pipe to the rex command. I'm going to tell it the field that we're looking for is underscore raw. That's essentially the raw data because right here now our interesting fields that we have are limited. Uh, nothing on our fields include the uh, IP address except for the raw event. So we're searching on the raw event. And here you can tell, all right, we're going to be making a uh, new field because we have our uh, parentheses and question mark. We're going to call this new field IP address. And then we're going to match on our IP addresses. So here, uh, and if you remember back in our slides, and I can actually jump back here to this slide here. This is the first way that we pulled out. Um, let me get my drawing going. This is the first way we pulled out uh, an IP address on our screen we are actually pulling it out in a different way. So here we have a logical group that we're saying we're looking between one and three digits followed by a period. And then we want to repeat that three times. So if you look at the IP address, you can say that covers the first three octets. So we can see this is a one and three, there's a period, one and three, period, one and three, period. And then we can follow that up with the literal digit one and three and that will capture the final octet of the IP address. So if you run this command, you can see that was much quicker than the erex command. And when now we have this field of IP address, we can click on that. And now we have our IP addresses pulled out. And then from here on, we can uh, use this as if it is a field, um, just like any other field that we might have in Splunk. We can use it any way we want after it is pulled out with this rex command. So that is an example of the rex command, but also an example of how, like I mentioned, regex can be handled in a number of different ways. So we had our original way of handling IP addresses. This is a different way of handling IP addresses. And actually, I will show you over here. This is a website called regex101.com. Definitely a go-to resource if you're learning regex. And just to show you briefly here, there's actually a another way that you can uh, match on IP addresses. Just want to really hammer in the point that there's no one correct way. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. So here we're looking for a digit between one and three characters. And then we are matching on either a period. And then we have our pipe here, which as we know means or and we have nothing, and that means or nothing. And then we repeat that four times. So it'll match this because it's one and three. It matches that period or nothing. It'll match this. Oops. It'll match this because that's one and three digits. It matches that period. It'll match this. It's one and three digits. It matches that period. And then it'll match this. That's one and three digits. And then nothing. So that is a third way that we can extract uh, or filter on IP addresses with regex. And I'm sure there's more than that out there. I just want to do a, show a couple of different examples there. 
So we have our IP address field there. And I want to also show that, like I mentioned, since we have this field now, we can actually, actually even uh, use the regex field on it now. So now that we have this field, we can uh, pipe to a regex command. We're going to use the IP address field that we just created up here. And we're going to filter on events that specifically match this regex expression. So anything that starts with 192, that has between one and three digits, dot, one and three digits, dot, one and three digits. So as you can see, we have 100 plus IP addresses, 40,000 events. But if we run this where we're matching on specific events, we drop down to 289. And as you can see, we now uh, have just these two IP addresses that we matched on. Um, so you can use regex to filter. The show shows that you can use regex to filter, but you can also even use regex in combination with rex to filter on fields that you've just extracted with the rex command. Um, and again, if we want to filter on something else, if we want to filter on IP addresses that are even a little more specific, if it starts with 12.130, uh, we can run that. Again, 382 events. And we're going to match on these two IP addresses. And again, a little less visual, but if we do not want to match on those, all events except for those, again, we can do that. Now we have 30, 39,000 events, and those uh, two IP addresses that we were filtering on are not going to be in this list. All right, one other thing I want to show, and again, to help. Uh, nail down the point that we can use regex in a couple different ways. I'm going to pipe two rex commands here. We're going to comment out one first because they do the same thing. These are two rex commands that pull out the user field. Uh, so as you can see, we're matching on the literal word user because the way that this data is uh, coming into Splunk, it's always going to have user, the word user before the username. So as you can see, user app server, uh, user in chart, user MongoDB. Uh, let's find one more user desktop. So we know now that uh, it's always going to begin with uh, user. So we match on the literal word user, the literal space here, the space here is the literal space. Then we're going to create a new field user where we match on one or more word characters until we hit that space character, that white space character. So if we run this, now we have a user field with 100 plus values, as you can see there, pulled out successfully. But we can also, as I mentioned, very rarely one correct way to use regex, uh, rex with the field of raw, we're matching on that user space, creating a new field called user, matching on one or more word uh, characters. And then again, we have our does not match. So we have the uh, braces with the caret at the beginning means go until you hit this or do not match on this. So we go until we hit a white space and then we stop our regex. So if we run that, again, we have our users there pulled out successfully. So two different ways to do the same thing. Um, as you can see, this is going to just be a small amount of uh, demo data. They ran pretty much the same, but on larger amounts of data, more complex uh, regex, there may be ways to make your regex more or less performant. And one final thing I want to show here is the said portion or the replacement portion of the rex command. So here we're going to look at a little bit different data. So we're going to be looking at some vendor sale demo data. As you can see, these uh, this demo data shows you a vendor ID, a code, and then an account ID. So say we are making a dashboard with this data. Uh, and when the data comes into Splunk, we want that full account ID in there. But when we put it onto this dashboard, we want to uh, replace cover up part of that data. We do not want that full account ID on our dashboard, uh, possibly for security purpose, purposes, something like that. So we can use the rex command and use the said mode to replace those. 
So we are going to first uh, pipe to eval. We're going to create a new field called ID length. And essentially, we're going to take the uh, field value of account ID and count the number of values within that. So if we run this, we have this new uh, ID length. And so you can see all of our account IDs are 16 uh, characters long. It's not necessary to do this first. It just helps us know um, that all our value or all of our data is formatted the same. And we know uh, if we want to, say, filter out the first 12 values of those 16, we know that, hey, we can use 12 and it's going to be the same for all of our data. So then we can go back up to the top, pipe to the rex command. So this time we're going to be using an actual field. So we have a field of account ID right here. And as you can see, when we click on it right now, before we run the rex command, all of our data shows up unfiltered. So we give it a mode of said, that means that we are going to be replacing values. And so, and then we give it a regex command. And so uh, the sed command for regex um, and the rex command is a little bit different um, syntax. So we start with an s forward slash and end with a slash g. Just lets it know that we are uh, going to be replacing these values. And so we are looking for a digit. We're looking for 12 digits, in fact. And then those 12 digits in between these this slash means this is what we're going to replace them with. So we're looking at this field. We're looking for the first 12 digits that we see. And then we are replacing that with 12 X's. So if we run this command, as you can see in the raw data, it is still the same. However, if we click on account ID, now our fields values are uh, replaced. So if we were to say table, account ID, you can see now they are going to be filtered out. So we can put this on a dashboard without fear of that potentially sensitive data reaching eyes that it doesn't, doesn't necessarily uh, need to reach. So that is the basics of regex commands within Splunk. So we covered the erex command, we covered the regex command, and we covered the rex command in both extracting fields and uh, replacing values within fields. So if we hop back over to our slides here, I can go ahead and say that that is the end of the content for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them into chat now. Uh, and if you have any questions uh, afterwards, maybe in an hour or so, a thought hits your mind, feel free to email us at support at kennygroup.com, and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, it was a wonderful pre presentation. I do have a question for you. How many right ways are there to write a regex? There is as many stars in the sky almost. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say if there's one right way or not. Um, there are more performant ways, and that is kind of uh, the benefit of continuing working with regex is getting better and better at creating regex that performs better within Splunk or within IT in general. Obviously, regex is not exclusive to Splunk. You use that throughout your IT journey. Um, so definitely recommend continuing working with regex beyond the basics and finding ways to uh, make it better, more performant, um, and really capture what you need. I would agree. Anyone that works for me is the right one. Yep. <laughs> A lot of ways. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, post any questions. Uh, again, uh, Eric is a member of our CX team and uh, per, uh, offers uh, expertise on demand for Splunk and for Atlas. If you have any questions about our expertise on demand uh, offerings or on Atlas itself, please reach out uh, in, and uh, you can reach, a, reach out to support at kinneygroup.com and we'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, if there are no more questions, I am going to post in the chat a list of our previous um, 
lunch and learns. We have quite a number of them. Uh, feel free to sign up and watch them on demand. Um, and with that, if there's nothing else, I will bid you adieu and have a great day. Thank you, everybody.